Good afternoon. The timing of Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, Taiwan seemed very odd, and it seemed that it could, the only conclusion would be that it was really about her. It was her vanity project. It was her trip, and effectively um, to hell with the consequences, particularly for the Taiwanese people. Is that unfair? I think it's very unfair. I mean, I think there's, there's two things going on here. I mean, clearly, China as a as a country has a belief that Taiwan should be part of uh, of China based on a, a certain view of history, rather like Russia's view of Ukraine should, should be part of history. Um, other people disagree, and the Taiwanese people themselves, while they've been very careful not to provoke the People's Republic of China, have also got a very clear sense of their own self-identity and indeed their own history, which precedes the uh, the transfer of power to the Communist Party in the, in the 1940s. The second point, which is really, really important, is what Nancy Pelosi was doing, was saying, supporting a democratic view of how the world, should, world, world, should, world should, be, should be and should be organised. So the Congress, even though the US government itself had uh, in the past taken what you might call a sort of ambivalent or even ambiguous view about uh, China's claim on Taiwan, Congress was much more clear and, and said that we will continue to support them with defence and everything goes to it. Now, Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. She represents, if you'd like, the uh, considered uh, democratic mandate and view of the American people. I think it's really important that when your uh, democratic countries like our own, like the Americans, make clear to autocrats like President Xi or Putin in, in, in the case of Russia and Ukraine, that the democratic will is more important than their autocratic view of the world. So I, I, I fear I, I strongly disagree with you on that one, Bev. I get the ideology. I understand what you're saying about the fact that democracies have to stand up to countries such as China. But right now, when there is already a war, a, perhaps a war against America or by proxy between America and Russia going on in Ukraine at the moment, why would she now want to go and stoke another potential fire? Because regardless of how you look at this, China's response has not, they are making it very clear that this, they've seen this as an act of provocation, her visit. That's how they have taken it. The, the Chinese are always going to claim this as a response. I mean, I'm not sure the details of the exact timing of the, of the invitation. As I understand it, the invitation has been outstanding for a long time. The Chinese are always going to react like this. The Chinese have always got this view that they're, 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 they're no interference in the internal affairs. That's a long-standing view of, of, the, of the Chinese Communist Party and their approach, that countries should not interfere other people's internal affairs. That makes it very difficult, therefore, to have conversation with the Chinese about things where, for example, human rights and the abuse of the, the weak population in, uh, in, in Western, Western China. They say, and they always state, this is a matter of internal affairs. They say the same thing about Taiwan, because the view of Taiwan is it's actually an integral part of the, of the, uh, of the, Chinese, the Chinese state. And indeed, that was also the argument when we protested against their abysmal uh, and, and extraordinary sort of um, withdrawal of the rights of the Hong Kong people. So I fear when we're dealing with China, you're always going to have this reaction. So, I mean, I don't see it as a sort of personal crusade by Nancy Pelosi. I do see this as an important statement of democratic countries saying to other democratic people that this is, this is important. I don't say it's ideology. That's fundamental to how we, see, we do our business.